Greetings everyone, Saji 2. Like I said in my last book haul video, there was a book sale coming up this weekend and it was today. And I have returned. Uh, wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. Big turnout. Lots of people waiting in line when I got there. Um, there was actually a guy, kind of reminded me of Austin because <laughs> this is what he looked like. Like a skinny younger guy, his pants are kind of hiked up, like, oh, this guy's probably autistic. And he's got two wagons, and then the right wagon is full of boxes. But I think what it was, was maybe he was working with the library because his wagons were sitting next to the table when you pay for your books. He wasn't like a guy going like get two wagon loads of books and then box up a bunch of them too. But as you can see, I bought a couple of mystery packages. Uh, sci-fi vintage and sci-fi with a little bit of spy novels in there like 20 bucks each for five dollars a bag and then after I got done I went to the Goodwill and I found this one I was looking uh, I think this is where I need to finish or like to work on this James Rollins series I'm working on and there was a guy at Goodwill that had like he had his cell phone sitting on the shelf and he had like this little barcode scanner he was looking at every book like barcode scanning everything to see I guess this thing, and he has a program that tells you what it's worth, like if you resell it on Amazon or something. So he was just like retail arbitrage shopping. I didn't tell him that there's a book sale going on at this very moment and he can make way more money. Or <laughs> if you're just like me, you just memorize all the books that are valuable so you don't have to have a barcode scanner. Um, so I got a couple of things I was looking for. Nothing major. There was like a Dean Koontz Mr. Murder. That's kind of like those ones down there. They're like the white titles on the black, like the old books. Uh, it was kind of, it was so many like people crammed in there that I didn't want to like reach underneath. It was like you had tables and tables and tables, and you had boxes underneath the table, so you're like looking above, looking above, or below, looking on the other guy's side, so you can maybe steal something off their side because it's easier than trying to squeeze in another row. It was uh, pretty chaotic. And if I wanted to fill up my John Grisham collection, I could have probably gotten at least six or seven more John Grishams that I don't have. Some I'd never heard of. Um, I looked in the Western table. There's like a small table for Westerns. Trying to find that Lonesome Dove hardback. I'm still like, that's my white whale. If I can ever get that one. Uh, they also had a copy of The Magicians by Liv Grossman, which I already have. But mostly... There's books I already own or didn't really care about. Um, apparently, a lot of people that showed up were there looking for like CDs and DVDs. Like, who still uses CD-ROM <laughs> DVDs? Got crazy. <clears throat> anyway, we got Chuck Wendig. I remember like remembering this guy's name for some reason. There's he's got like a series I think that I have on my TBR. I don't know if this is one of them. But I got another one by him somewhere. Um, they had a bunch of these like brand new Ayn Rands. Atlas Shrugged, Fountainhead. But also like a bunch of these We the Livings. I got a whole box of these. So I just like got each, one of each. Because they're like 50 cents. Feast of All Saints is like an antique Anne Rice. It looks like... I don't know if this is part of the vampire novels. I don't think it is. It might be. Anyway, I sold all my vampire novels when I moved down to the next thing. And then I got Story of Edgar Salthill. Uh, I've got like some big great American novels like this. That this looks like one of them I have. This was Oprah's Book Club edition. I may have this, but I don't think I do. I think this is something else that I got. So I'm going to put these over here. And I got these big totes from Goodwill and Salvation Army that I took with me to like carry books in. That was a big help. So I got Sherilyn Kenyon, Archeron, and also Born of Shadows. I don't know if these are good. You always see her next to Stephen King in the shelves, so... I think I've got one of her books. Then I got this sci-fi duology, I think. Star. Starbreak. And 
Star Glass by Phoebe North. I don't know anything about these, but I guess they're ex-library books. Young adult. And then I got Hannibal Rising. Was this the very first Hannibal books? I know I really did like that one Thomas Harris book I read. But it's hardcover. I figured I would get it. It says by the author of Songs of the Lamb, so this makes me think. Red Dragon was the first one. That's right. Got another Agatha Christie, Closed Casket. Now this is one of the ones I thought was really cool. Uther by Jack White. Not the black the white stripes, Jack White. This is like a, a historical fiction based on Uther Pendragon from the Arthur Tales. And I only know about it because Brian Lee Durfee's shelf video. Then they also had this paperback, Ford at River's Bend. This is part of the same series. Brand new. Uh, I like to have it in hardcover, but I just really like the covers on these, the gold embossing and stuff. Really looks cool. So, and then what else we got in this bag? Zeros by also Chuck Wendig. This might be the one that I put on my TBR. Uh, it's about hackers. Sounds like something I would TBR. Um, and then this bag. I only got two bags, and I got these mysterious packages. Got Dragon Teeth by Michael Crichton. Uh, I guess that's the sequel to Lost World. Do I have Dragon Teeth? I think that was one of the ones I actually needed. Let's hope and pray. I got 13 Reasons Why. This is the one that the Netflix show is based off. And then I got Hush Hush, because I think this is the one that's the prequel to the one I had last time, Crescendo, by Becca Fitzpatrick. So now I have both of those. This seems like a romance about fallen angels or something, but whatever. And then Stephen R. Donaldson, I just saw his name, so I grabbed it. Fatal Revenant, The Last Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. Oh yeah, Thomas Covenant. Yeah, that's a, like a really popular sci or fantasy series. Uh, so I guess this is the last book, or the last Chronicles. I don't know. Then I got the uh, Charlene Harris Touch of Dead. This is like the um, the novellas or something combined. I think. Oh man, it is like really large text. It's gonna be real short and easy to read. 185 something pages. Um, but it was like, oh, it's a hardcover, so I probably had to pay a dollar for that. Kind of got ripped. Uh, Peter Straub mystery. I don't have any Peter Straub really. Still need to get the talisman that he wrote with Stephen King. I think, right? Oh, this is the other one I was excited about. J.K. Rowling, Casual Vacancy. Yeah. Is that right? I thought she wrote it as Robert Galbraith. I guess this is the one she wrote after Harry Potter, using her real name, before she went to Robert Galbraith and wrote that series. I have heard this is not good, but I needed it for my collection. And then I got, they had three copies of this, Shogun by James Clavell. I've always wanted, like, the big hardcover one with the samurai, the red on the white. But they had uh, a hardcover that didn't have any uh, cover on it, and then they had another paperback copy. So, at least I got a readable copy. So I'll stick that there. Stick these over here. Stick these over here. Now, we get to go through the mystery. I don't even know what these are. So this is going to be exciting for me as well as probably going to be a lot of copies of stuff I already have. Where's my little razor? Hmm. so many knives but none of them are here right now. One second. Looking around, looking around.
Okay. We got Chris Bunch, Scoundrel Worlds. I don't have any Chris Bunch. Keith Lamer, Bolo. I've got some like book that sounds like Bolo, but it's not Bolo. Combat SF by Jordan Gordon R. Dixon. Got some good stuff in here, actually. Undefeated by Keith Lamer. Edgar Rice Burroughs, very popular sci-fi writer, Lost on Venus. You see that? Another Edgar Rice Burroughs. Pellucidar. Some like naked chick fighting a tiger on the cover. A fat ass. Down for that. By the creator of Conan, Robert E. Howard, The Lost Valley of Iskander. Pain in Bloodstone. Carl Edward Wagner. Cormac MacArt, When Death Birds Fly. Mightier than Conan, Robert E. Howard's other hero, Cormac. Oh, that's a Robert E. Howard. Mightier than Conan. Who could be so mighty? Wolf Worlds by Alan Cole and Chris Bunch. Uh, Forlorn Hope by David Drake. Hammers Slammers by David Drake. What is this? Kevin J. Anderson, Metal Swarm, and The Ashes of Worlds. Very nice, very nice. I don't have any of these. Well, thank. The Victorious World by David Weber. Eric Flint. Grantville Gazette. Sequels to 1632. Huh. That's not sci-fi, is it? I guess it may be something. I don't know. Third Encounter by G. Harry Stein. That was really good for Counting the Cost. Hammer Slammers David Drake. That must be like about a crew they call Hammer Slammers. I'm really loving Starfield, by the way. I need to name my crew something. I named the ship Thousand Sunny because I've been watching One Piece. Uh, Sten, novel by Alan Cole and Chris Bunch. And Bright Star by Harold Goyle. Coyle. None of these I don't think I have owned already. So that's good. That's real good. <laughs> Let's take them over here. Um, I took my cover off. Currently reading the Tommy Knockers by Stephen King, which I need to talk about because I'm also listening to uh, Destroyer of Worlds podcast by Hardcore History Dan Carlin, and this book is kind of about like nuclear power. And I'm gonna watch Oppenheimer once it gets on HD on the website where I stream my movies. Really getting freaked out by all the nuclear stuff. I've been paying attention to lately. Far so good. Ah, oh. Ender's Game. Who doesn't have a copy of Ender's Game that you want a free copy of Ender's Game? Go over there. Total Recall by Pierce Anthony, the based on the movie, or the movie's based on the book, I guess. A major motion picture starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. James Bond, Ian Fleming. What? From Russia with Love? That might be worth something. The Spy Who Loved Me? These are not sci-fi, but these are like... These are antique Ian Flemings? What the fuck? How much is this going to be worth? Copyright 1962? Berkeley edition 1982. Second printing. So, maybe not as much as I thought. Time Patrol. Paul Anderson. David Weber. This is a thick boy. War of Honor. 
Price of Command by G Kevin Randall. Jefferson's War. Paul Anderson. Flandry of Terra. Paul Anderson. David Falcolin. Star Trader. Technic Civilization Saga. With a quote by Robert Jordan on the front. Empire's End. Alan Cole and Chris Bunch. Is that one that was over there? Sagittarius Command by R.M. Mulek. Mulek. Eric Flint, 1634, The Ram Rebellion. The Ram Rebellion? Is this sci-fi? I think I saw like 1633, the sequel to 1632 over there, and I didn't know what it was. What is this series about? It's supposed to be sci-fi, but it's like 1600 sci-fi? James Bond, You Only Live Twice. And Dr. No. That's four James Bond novels we got here. Star Trek 1, adapted by James Blish. What the hell is this? Look at it, it's like a pamphlet. Seven Tales of Intergalactic Intrigue from the award-winning television series created by Gene Roddenberry. What the hell? It's like 136 pages. And there's seven stories in the 136 pages? What do you call a story? <laughs> a Talent for War, Jack McDevitt. Alaska Republic, Stone Compton. Chris Bunch's The Gangster Conspiracy, Star Risk Limited Novel. Alan Cole and Chris Bunch, Vortex, a Sten Adventure. And what? Black Powder War? Naomi Novik. That's giving me Powder Mage vibes. Cool font. Temeraire is a dragon for the ages. Terry Brooks quote on the front. So this is about killing dragons with black powder. I don't know why it's in the sci-fi mystery bag I got, but there you go. This is all the books that I got, and hopefully... I mean, I could say I won't buy any more the rest of the year, but last year the best books that I got at like Goodwill shopping was like right before Christmas and right after Christmas when everybody's like unloading all their old stuff so they can make room for the new Christmas presents. And the fall just seems like a good time for shopping. It's just fun to do. So I don't know. I don't have room for any of this.